So if somebody's following a low fat plant-based diet, how do they know they're getting enough protein and why is that protein not detrimental? Well, okay. So, and it definitely isn't. They did a really good study on diabetes um, looking at animal protein versus plant protein. And as you ate more animal protein, you had a higher incidence of getting diabetes. But as you ate more plant protein, that wasn't the case. Why is that? I got to speculate. We don't have exact answers to this. I think because possibly the plant proteins don't have heme iron in them. They're, they're not coming with heme iron, so we're not attacking beta cells. Because the plant proteins also are not coming with saturated fat, which we know stimulates intramyocellular fat, which causes insulin resistance. Possibly because the plant proteins don't have as much of the certain amino acids that stimulate the, tra the, the transportation of fat into the muscle cells because they have a different amino acid profile. Uh, possibly because it may be beneficial to just eat less protein in general. Most plant eaters eat enough protein, but probably less than the average meat eater. All of these things may play a factor. Um, it, it may be just the low fat factor. It may be that people on a plant-based diet are eating such low fat that the fat isn't going to the cells. There's an interesting thing that happens in cells. It's called the Randall effect. And basically your cells need something, it, this could get really complex science, but your cells need to work on something. They're either gonna work on carb or they're either gonna work on fat. Uh, and if you are eating a really low fat diet, your body becomes, you know, every, you'll hear people talk about fat adaptation, like you could adapt to a high fat diet where you're eating fat. And it's true, you can. But people don't talk about carb, carb adaptation. And you guys, I've seen you guys eat, you guys are carb adapted. Your body has become so insulin sensitive that it is adapted to these high intakes of carbs. And that may be what's happening. And so people that I see that eat a lot of carbs and a very low fat diet seem to process those carbs extremely well. That's really great. So, in, so I think you touched on this earlier, really briefly, but in, in general, how much protein do people actually need? And can they get that from a plant-based diet? Um, okay, so how much do they need? There's been a lot of studies about that. Uh, the RDA for years was doing a lot of studies looking at nitrogen uh, um, breakdown and how much nitrogen you produce, how much nitrogen you need to see what the balance is. Now, they wanted to make sure that they didn't leave anybody behind. In other words, whenever you're looking at a set of labs, like I'm looking at a big population and I'm seeing how much nitrogen they produce versus how much they take in and where am I going to get an even uh, amount? And you see a normal curve. And in that normal cor curve, there's a mean, median, uh, both average and middle uh, that we look at. And that average, that middle is pretty low, but they didn't want to go just by that. They wanted to go two standard deviations above. And in other words, the, the, the average person may only need 30 grams of protein a day, but they didn't want to stop at 30. They wanted to go two standard deviations, meaning that they were sure that the number they gave was enough protein for 98 0.5% of the entire population. And that number for women is about 46 grams and for men about 56 grams. If you're an athlete, you might want to, we, we say multiply by 1.5 to 1.7. Um, and that is the amount of protein that should absolutely cover everything you need. Can you get that from plants? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we're now seeing the men's and women's uh, top tennis players are, are vegan. We're seeing bodybuilders that are vegan. The only American um, competitive weightlifter at the U.S. Olympics, the only male, uh, was vegan. Um, Ironman triathletes, CrossFitters, there's so many people uh, that are not just making it by on a plant-based diet. They're actually thriving and uh, ex excelling in these professions where we thought protein was so vital. So absolutely you could get it. And the funny thing to me is we, there's, we don't have a protein deficiency in this country. Nobody is protein deficient. I never see someone come to me protein deficient unless, you know, they're, you know, extremely sick for other reasons and they're not eating anything. And usually it's not protein deficiency. It's protein calorie deficiency. They're just not eating enough. I've never seen someone who's getting over a thousand calories, not get enough protein. It's just, almost impossible to do. Um, but yet, 
We are so deficient in other things. We're magnesium deficient, potassium deficient. We are fiber deficient like you cannot believe. So everyone's sitting here focusing. They're eating two times, some people three times what the RDA recommends. And remember, again, that RDA recommendation isn't like a minimum. It's like that's enough to get everybody. And then people are eating twice that, and yet they're getting, you know, only 10 grams of fiber when they should probably be getting 60 grams of fiber even though RDA is like 35. So it's this crazy world where we're so focused on this one macronutrient instead of looking at all these other things that we're deficient in. And that's what's leading to so many of our disease processes. When you go to the blue zones, when you go to the parts of the world where people are eating extremely healthy, like go to Okinawa, the percentage of protein that they get in their diet is only about seven to 10%, which compares to our 15 to 20%. And we're always trying to get that even higher but their fiber content is way higher than ours. And that's probably the central reason that they live a really long, healthy life, and we don't. Now, another one of these myths that you hear all the time is that plant proteins are incomplete. Right. True or false? False. I mean, look, you can pick out one certain plant and say it's got a deficiency. So the one thing plants will have a little bit low on is lysine. But in the course of a day, eating all these different varied plants, you get enough lysine. There's no lysine deficient people. I've never seen a lysine deficiency. Um, and so the fact that you're eating different foods over a different course of day, you're going to get enough of these things. Now, everyone focuses on an amino acid called leucine. The bodybuilders do especially because that leucine molecule stimulates IGF-1, which is a growth hormone that's supposed to give you muscles. We also know it gives you cancer, though. We also know that leucine stimulates this pathway called mTOR, which leads to aging. And if you look at the studies uh, long-term on bodybuilders that are always supplementing with leucine or leucine derivatives like HMB, they have very low life expectancies. And so this focus on getting all these amino acids from meat and getting extra amino acids may be hurting their lives. Whereas if you look at, for instance, the Seventh Day of Venice, so many great studies on the Seventh Day of Venice. And you look, because the, the Seventh Day of Venice, they're different genes, so you can't blame any of their health effects on genes. There's you know, people from all races. That none of them smoke, they all exercise. Some of them eat meat, some of them just eat fish, some of them will eat dairy, and some of them are vegan. They got one of the highest vegan populations. And they've followed 100,000 or 70 something thousand of them for many years. And what you see clearly is that the vegans don't, the vegan rate of diabetes is about 2%. I mean, it's extremely, extremely low. Whereas the meat eaters there, again, Keep in mind, these are healthy meat years, is about 8%. I mean, there's a big difference uh, just in this simple, you know, population study looking at it. And then in other population studies, like the EPIC study, where they're following like 500,000 people, and they've been following them for many years, they found that, <laughs> this is interesting, the more sugar people ate, the less diabetes they had, which is not to tell people to go and eat sugar, but it's to tell you that maybe this idea that it's all about the sugar is wrong. Whereas the more protein people ate, the worse their diabetes was. And that's, that's the problem. It's, there's definitely this association with eating meat, with eating animal protein and diabetes.